Jai Hind everyone, welcome back to the Patriotic IS. Let's start our ISPCS Wala Daily Current Affairs. Today we have a lot of topics that are important and relevant for the UPSC. The first topic that we will discuss is the Pasmanda Muslim, just for the knowing the basics with respect to the prelims. And also we can know that the different community and sections within the Muslim itself under the society section of the main syllabus. Then we will study that staying in the power. So here it is with respect to the power generation by the coals, different type of the powers that we will, uh, different type of the coals that we will study on the basis of the carbon content. So it will be for the prelims again. So this is part of the geography GS paper one. After that, we will see that the takeaway from the Mumbai hoarding tragedy. We saw that the, there was the co collapse, the a hoarding, a large hoarding collapse on the petrol pump and there was the casualty. So we will see that the law related to this hoarding and installation of the hold, hoardings and the maintenance of it. So it will be under GS paper 3, the disaster management. Because we saw that the in the cutting of these ovens and uh, yes, these uh, large metals, we saw a lot of difficulty and that's why the casualty was high. Then we will study that what are the NIA's allegation against the NSCM. So here we will see that the uh, the insurgency into the north east area and the demand for the greater Nagaland and now the insurgency into the Manipur higher insurgency due to the there is the civil strife civil conflict that is going on between the tribes. So this will be for the GS paper three internal security. It will be for the men's analysis. After that we will see that the RBI keeping an eye on the gold loan. So. RBI has put the restriction on the, this non-banking financial institution so that the way they are giving the loans that is risky for the economic system in the India so that the, it, can, it cannot be possible to be sustainable for the long time and that's why the restriction has been imposed and this will be the part of GS paper 3 banking system again for the men's analysis. Then we will study the Chabahar already we have done analysis into the storage session so we will do the quick revision on this again for the mains GS paper 2 into India Iran relations okay after that we will see that the human papilloma virus this is the HPV vaccine that has reduced the cervical cancer in women so this will be the for the GS paper 3 basic science as well as the disease after that, we will see that the women with the no sexual autonomy, they have the more chances to get the STIs. What is the STIs? The sexually transmitted disease. So we will see that all about this with perspective to the GS paper one society section where, where we will see the vulnerable sections such as the women. Then we will study the role of light and the eye. So this will be for the basic science, how the eye perceives different colors of the light. So there is the, there is the mechanism. So we will see into a, in a basic manner, again for the prelims. Before entering into the session, let's start with our furious five session. Under that, we take the five questions that we discuss one by one. So these questions are from the topic that we have covered into the stored session where we have discussed different topic and on that topic we will try to solve five questions so that we can revise the topic as well as we can retain this topic for the longer time. And these are the, these are the questions that help you into the way you can solve the UPSC and the state PCS question into the, of the prelims. So let's start with the first question. Which of the following statement regarding the election commission of India is correct? A. Election Commission of India is a single member body. B. The Chief Election Commissioner of India has a tenure of the eight years. C. The decision of Election Commission can be directly challenged into the Supreme Court of India in all cases. D. The Election Commission is responsible for the conducting election to Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and State Legislature Assembly. What about A? A. Single member body. So there is no definition of the how much members will be there. So here now it, it, uh, there are the three members, one chief election commission and the two election commission. So this is incorrect. So second, the chief election commissioner of India has a tenure of the eight years. Not, it is not eight years, it is six years or the age of 65 years. So anyone that is the, that 
comes first, th that will be taken. If the person crossed the 65 years, he will be no, no more, the Election Commission of India. Or the, if the person is crossed the eight years into the, uh, six years into the tenure, so he will be not a member of or the Chief Election Commissioner. Okay. The decision of Election Commission can be directly challenged into the Supreme Court of India. Here you will see that the in all cases. Generally, they have to go into the high court and after that they have to appeal into the Supreme Court. That is the process and not directly to the Supreme Court. Yes, in some of the cases, but the general rule as it has been defined by the Supreme Court itself that go into the high court and then come to the Supreme Court. Last question, uh, last point, the election commission, uh, commission is responsible for conducting election to the Lok Sabha, Raj Sabha and the state legislature assembly. So this is correct. So D will be the correct answer. Question number two, which of the following statement about old Kurtlama Fall is correct? Old Kurtlama Fall is located in Stone Ghat. B, old Kurtlama Fall is situated in the state of Kerala. C, old Kurtlama Kurt Fall received maximum rainfall into the southwest monsoon. By the southwest monsoon. D, this fall is located close to the Kalakkad Munda Thura, Thurai Tiger Reserve. So here you will find that it is not into the Eastern Ghat, it is into the Western Ghat. So first statement is incorrect. A is incorrect. Old Kartama Fall is situated into the state of Kerala, not into the Kerala, but it is into the Tamil Nadu. So B is also incorrect. The old Kardama fall received maximum rain fall into the southwest monsoon. No, it is during the retreating monsoon that is known as the northeast monsoon. Northeast monsoon, and this is the correct. So this is incorrect. Old Kardama falls located into the Kalakkad Munda Thurai Tiger Reserve. So this is correct. Yes, it is situated into the Kalakkad Munda Thurai Tiger Reserve. Question number three. Consider following statements about the coffee cultivation in India. India is the largest producer of coffee in the world. Do, second, coffee is predominantly grown in the stone state of India. C. Uh, third, coffee cultivation in India mainly involves the robusta and arabica varieties. Which of the follow, which of the above statement is are correct? One and two, two and three, three, one, two and three. India is the largest producer of coffee in the world. No, it is the Brazil. So. Brazil is the largest producer and India is at the sixth number. Coffee is pre predominantly grown in the eastern state. It is the not eastern but it is southern state. Southern state. So second is incorrect. So you can eliminate one and two. There is two incorrect one and two are there. So only three. Because coffee cultivation in India is mainly of the high grade. So Basta and Arabica is known as the high variety. They, their quality is very high and that is produced in India. Question number four. Which of the following statement is true about the habitat preference of the Iberian Linux? The Iberian Linux prefers dense tropical forest. B. Iberian Linux prefers Mediterranean woodlands and the scrubland. C. The Iberian Linux prefer arid deserts. D. The Iberian Linux prefer alpine meadow. So here you, you will see that they are found mainly into the Spain and Mediterranean woodland and the scrubland. So here they are not into the desert or the alpine. They are into the Mediterranean woodland and the scrubland. This they are only found into the part southern part of the Spain, that is the Iberian Peninsula. So, B is the correct answer. Last question. IUCN was founded in which year? 1945, 1948, 1952, 1965. So, here you will see that IUCN, that is a non-NGO, non-profit company, non-profit uh, this NGO, and they compile the data with respect to the different type of the species, either it will be plant or the animal species, and they also categorize the, uh, them into the different categories as per the threat vulnerability of these species, and they also release the red list, and here you will find that the these uh, lists, uh, these categories such as the endangered, critically endangered, extinct, all these is released under the IUCN status. So it was formed into the 1948.
so correct answer will be b so this is all about from the furious five session here we solved the five questions that is most probable and these are the questions that has been taken from the previous session the topic that we have covered so thank you for joining this furious five session now we will start with the our news analysis with the front page on the front page there is no major relevant news for the upsc the first news that is talking about the fifth phase of the election and we are going to the election will be held on the 20th so we have given the silence period so mostly the the area that the constituency that is into the main highlighted is the raibareli and amiti that is from the congress family congress here nehru family second is talking about the an address in india minted at the post office so here you will see that it is with respect to the sum of the citizenship that we have given on the basis of the citizenship amendment act and already we have discussed this citizenship amendment act into the detail this talks about the speedy process to grant the citizenship it has reduced the 12 years of the residency criteria to the 5 years and that's why it has made it easier for the register with respect to the uh, the naturalization process and these are given to the three countries those uh, those three countries are the afghanistan pakistan and the bangladesh and here we have also specified that the only we are going to give to the six religious uh, communities excluding the muslim so you will see that uh, that's why there was lot of pro uh, protest for the L, uh, for the exclusion of the muslim and uh, exclusion on, on the basis of that the muslims are majority in these three countries and that's why uh, they are not there is no threat for the persecution the opposition was that there is the lot of persecution of the those sect who are not into the mainstream muslim community for example the sohrawardi the ahmadiyya community so we have seen all this thing beside that the opposition was due to the non inclusion of the tamilian sri lankan tamilians and the those migrated from the tamil uh, tamil nadu so this was also into the uh, due to the this this all was into the public domain for the last 2 3 years not 2 3 years it is from the 2019 itself it has been the from the 5 years again this is the continuously these are the crime news that is not that much political news uh, we are not going to discuss again this is the criminal pro political news this mp prajwal is his sexual videos that is out that is continuously into the news so we will not go into the detail of this this is not that much relevant next important news that we are going to take is uh, from the pasmanda muslims and it is on the page number okay here it is given that the bjp want to bjp owns pasmanda outreach in bihar through of rails by the modi's campaign speech here you will see that the pasmanda community and the pasmanda communities are those community who are the backward community into the muslim itself they 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 have demanding for the obc's status as well as the scst status however we see that the those these pasmanda muslims are the mainly belonging to the those who have converted from the scst communities or the dalit community and the, there is the hierarchy there is the there is the caste discrimination caste in the uh, muslim uh, indian muslim as well so you will see that the we have given lot of to the those uh, religion who have coming from the outside the india like the indian culture but uh, yes they have also we have learned many things from the them as well as we have given them a lot of thing and one of the thing that we have given them is the caste so you will find that across the world there is no caste system on the hierarchical basis into the muslim or the christianity but in india you will find the dalit christian obc christian dalit muslim obc muslim so this is the main thing and uh, they are suffering from the so many discrimination and that's why they demand for the their status as the scst and obc next important news that you will see this picture these are the pictures from the mines coal mines you will see that the different type of the machines that is used to mining okay 
so here we, we will see that the how the coal has become important into the generation into the India here it is given the SCT of the Nevelli that is into the Tamil Nadu and that is the considered as the largest producer of the lignite type of the coal that is the four type of the coal we will see and the, these coals have been categorized on the basis of the carbon content the most pure and the most uh, that is the anthracite and it contains 90 to 98 percent of the carbon and that's why it is considered as the highest rank of the coal there is the less produ production of the co2 and uh, they have the highest efficiency and highest produce uh, production of the energy the second is the bituminous coal it contains about the 80 to 95 percent of the carbon and it is the second rank of the coal into the quality the third is the third again this uh, this uh, second and its category of the sub uh, it is 70 to 85 the third is the lignite as we mentioned that mostly it is found into the Tamil Nadu and the quality is not that much high because the low content of the carbons 50 to 70 percent and the last the lowest is the peat so you, you will see that the, there is the four type of the coal this is the anthracite bituminous lignite and the peat so please remember in the prelims they can ask that the the highest quality found into the anthracite and uh, it goes to the 90 percent of the carbon content so here you will see that it is expected that the coal will be the mostly major segment for the production of the energy and power into the India despite we have so much emphasis on the renewable energy steel the coal constitute for the 50 percent of the production of the power into the India so this is all about from the this pictures and the, this news that this want to explain here the next important news that we are going to cover is from the FAQs frequently asked question and now we are going to discuss the Mumbai Mumbai hoarding tragedy where there was the collapse of the hoarding and it resulted into the death of the many of the people so here you will see that the what are the law that uh, mainly deal with the hoarding and uh, the regulation of the hoardings so here you will see that the hoardings this comes under the state government particularly with uh, the municipalities municipalities give the give uh, this on to the contract basis to the different contractors and the companies get the these uh, holdings by the those contractors this is the process so here you will see that the one of the regulation the uh, regulation is from the bureau of indian standard bureau of indian standard bsi is talk about the holding under the is 875 part 3 and it's give the formula for how to calculate the force coefficient applicable to this wind facing structure so it gives the formula that how you need to calculate that the, these beholding can sustain the pressure of the wind or the storm or the such storm that we found into the Mumbai here you will see that the there has been the illegal and unsustainable holdings in the city and uh, there has been the these are mostly associated with the government bodies such as the railway port and that's why we have seen that the, there has been the ignorance of the the standard the the inspection and the regular verification of the all this standard so we have seen that the municipality corporation act for one of the example one of the act that's regulate the holding is the municipality of uh, uh, Mumbai municipality corporation act this is the 1988 act means it was the colonial period act and it's talk about the there is need to retain permission of the munis municipal commissioner to put the structure such a structure okay beside that it also talk about the maximum size the maximum size should be the 50 feet and uh, by the 50 feet 15 to the 14 to the 40 feet and uh, we have seen that uh, whenever there is the holding that is larger than 100 square feet they need to bring the stability certification structure 
stability certification from the registered structure engineer. So all these norms is not followed because of that the government official and authority they do not take it uh, it uh, seriously. Okay, so here you will see that the advent of the digital board now has created the more pressure on this structure and already we trying to mount all these digital boards on the previous old structure and that is making them more vulnerable. Okay, because the, uh, the digital boards have the uh, more efficiency to show the high number of the pictures and uh, those different type of, even it can increase the number of the ad and uh, uh, advertisement and the different companies advert advertisement same digital board can show the uh, ad of the multiple companies and that's why it has become more efficient so here you will see that the now we have seen that the continuously increase into the extreme condition and that condition these measures need to be implemented for example the number of the cyclones that is increasing the intensity of the cyclone that is, is increasing and in the coastal area we have to bring the a spatial standardization of all these structures. So here that has been mentioned that uh, uh, some of the cases here, uh, there are the so many uh, layer of the liabilities whenever such events happen. For example, in one of the case here, it is given that the government and the owner of the private structure do have the liability. And one of the case here, the Bank of Baroda was, say, the Mahesh Gupta. The Mahesh Gupta was passing through the bike and he was, uh, he collided with the one of the advertisement and he died. After that, the government held the Bank of Baroda for the, this death and asked him to pay the compensation. So here you will see that the already these companies, those who are managing these holdings, they have all knowledge that the what is the maximum number of the uh, maximum speed of the wind could be possibly in the that particular region, and they can check and they can inspect, they can verify the structure on a regular basis. So this is all about. Besides that, we have seen that the disaster management improvement because we have seen that the in the Mumbai case the cutter was not available, the gas cutter. Was was there and they thought that it is the petrol pump so there could be the risk and that's why they didn't use the gas cutter into the absence of the gas cutter they have to wait for the longer period for the the alternative and that's why we need to bring all this thing into the our disaster management preparedness that has been mentioned here so this is all about from the, this news article you should know that how these holdings are governed and the regulated Next important news that we are going to take is with respect to the NIA allegation against the NSCN. So here you will see that the NSCN, that is the National, National Socialist Council of Nagaland. This is the one of the organizations that talk about the sovereignty of the Nagaland, a separate land for the Nagaland and uh, a greater more extended land for the Nagaland with the sovereignty, with the separate constitution, separate flag. And we have seen that there is the uh, there is the faction of it. So here you will see that the recently there was the arrest by the National Investigation Agency NIA on the charges of the involvement into the terror activities, particularly those who are involved and supporting the those meet outfit ag outfit against the. The, uh, instigating the violence into the Manipur, into the into context of the in the context of the recent civil war, civil conflict that is going on into the Manipur between the Mitis and the Kuki Jo community. So here you will see that the yes, there was the arrest of the six people, and mostly they are associated with the this National Socialist Council of Nagaland. And yes, here you will see that the other organization separatist insurgents uh, group are like the People's Liberation Army and the Kangli Yalo Kamba Loop. So here Kangli is the the mythical dragon of the Manipur. Let me show you this mythical dragon. This is the mythical dragon. This is known as the Kangli. You, if you will visit the Manipur, there is the Kangla fort into the Imphal. The capital of the Manipur is Imphal. And there is a uh, historical place known as the Kangla fort. Here you will see uh, see that the this dragon, this is the mist, uh, mist, uh, mist, uh, 
myth uh, mythological dragon that has the cultural and the traditional value into the Manipur history. So here you will see that the uh, they are these are the organization that are the promoting the insurgency for the separation of the Nagaland and the, there is they also demand for the sep uh, separate sovereignty status of the Manipur as well. Okay, so here you will see that the uh, they, it has given that uh, what is the population percentage of the different community, 53% of the Manipur, they are the Mitis and 17% uh, 17, 17 are the Nagas and the 26% are the Kukijo group. Recently we have seen that there, there is the so much strife that is going between all these things. We, we will see that the most of the border area with the Myanmar the, that is open and uh, that is uh, mainly the, that is the free movement regime. Free movement regime means the board, in the border area those community living into the space of the 16 kilometers from the border they are allowed to cross go and go and cross the border and uh, there is the relationship between the people across the border and that's why they are allowed to go and meet without the uh, need of the visa or the passport so this is known as the free movement regime recently due to the this conflict that was going on between the Mitis and uh, this cookies group so government of India decided that we will fence and we will end this free movement regime to prevent the migration, illegal migration and the illegal migration of insurgents into the Indian side. So here you will see that the why the charge seat was there. The, the NIA that uh, arrested six people. Here it is given the name of the people and uh, the charge seat filed official evidence of the link between NSC and IM and Imphal Valley West Insurgents Group. So here it was found that the, this NSCM, National Socialist Council of the Nagaland, IM, IM this is the e, Isaac Muhua. They are the two person who lead these two group of the NSCM. Okay, so however after the the uh, protest from the Mira Paiba, a women's collective into the Manipur, they protested and they clashed with the police after that the NIA released most of them. Later it uh, arrested one of the person and uh, it found that it has a core relationship into the providing the training of the locals meaty, meaty uh, youth into the Seloi Langai ecological park near the Keku. So here you will find that the, he was providing the training for the insurgency of the 1890 youth and uh, to join the PLA, People's Liberation Army cadres, into the July 2023. So here you will see that the, this is the main thing, why the arrest was there. The name of the person is the Anand, Anand Singh. He was arrested later. Despite he, all six were released, but later and I arrested and it uh, why it arrested because it found that the, the person was training some of the Mitis insurgent group to join PLA. Okay. Are there other active insurgent group? There are a lot of insurgent group in the Northeast. Recently we have seen that the those from the Kukijo group community there has been the twenty fourth such insurgent group they signed a suspension of operation pact with the Ministry of Home Affairs and the state government of the Manipur into the 2008. However, we have seen that the recently the state government of the Manipur, they thought that we should not extend this pact and the, the pact is not renewed and that's why there is the suspicion with respect to, to the, the suspension of operation pact because the chief minister of Manipur Biren Singh think that the, these groups due to the suspension of the operation pact the Indian security or the Indian police was not able to take the action and they are promoting the conflict, civil war and insurgency. So this is the region. 
what is the NSCN stand? NSCN talk about the it doesn't want to involve or the interfere in anything into the money pool. Whatever is going on, they don't want to go. And beside that, they do not. Uh, they they uh, uh, there is the accu uh, NSCN that has been accused with the. Indian security force helping cook militant group against the meat is revolutionary into the man mad. Okay, so here you will see that the NSCN, a major group representing the Naga tribe, and here you will see that the their demand for a land that include the whole of the Naga land, some part of the Manipur. Here you will see they are also demanding for this part of the. Mamar as well. So Mamar is the the border of the Mamar start from the Deo. So this okay. These are the uh, area of the Myanmar. This is the Manipur. They are also asking for the sum of the area of the Assam as well. This thin Sukia area. So here you will see that the they are asking the area of the Manipur, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, and also from the Myanmar. And they talk about the Greater Nagaland, Nagalim. Into the their language, they call it the Nagalim. And uh, it is mainly founded into the 1980 by the Isaac Chi Shu and uh, Muhiwa, T. Muhiwa. So, however, recently we saw that uh, the there is the talk that is going on between the Indian government under the leadership of AKMSI, former special director of the intelligence bureau. And uh, yes, it is continuously going on. We want to resolve the issue. So you should know what is the NIA. This is the Specialized Counter-Terrorism Law Enforcement Agency. And it came into the existence after the Mumbai attack into the 2008. And its headquarters is into the Delhi, and uh, it is headed by the IPS officer generally. Okay, so senior IPS officer. This National Council of the Nagaland, they are the militant and separatist group that is also known as the insurgent group. Uh, they are for founded into the 1980 to oppose the agreement between Indian government and the National. Naga National Council, that was at that time main insurgent group. They were trying to bring the peace with the Indian government, and that's why the opposition start they were formed. And now they are the main group. There is the two NSCM faction, one is the Kaplang, and other is the Ijak Mua. So these are the two groups led by the two personality, SS Kaplang and NS Ijak Mua. There is the two people who is leading this. Okay. We can write a means question based on the topic we have discussed on the insurgency into the northeast discuss the historical and the current demand of the nsc and im particularly in the light of the framework agreement signed into the 2015 so the main demand of this i nsc and im is that they want a separate sovereign land and this land include the manipur also some of the portion of the Assam and the Myanmar. Here they want a separate constitution, separate uh, flag, and uh, they want total separation from the India and the Indian state. However, they, there was the agreement, in the agreement we tried to negotiate within the constitutional framework. We tried to give them as much as autonomy that is within constitution of India. Besides that, we were not ready for the separate constitution and the separate flag. And we are not also want to secede or to give any portion of the other state that is not belonging from the Nagaland. This is the Indian state and there is the continuous, uh, this is the extent of the Indian government. Continuously the negotiation is going on, so please write your answer on the this context. This is all about from the this news article. Next news again from the FAQs here, it is the why is RBI keeping an eye on the gold loan. Here you will see that mainly it is into the context of the context of the those NBFC, non-banking financial companies or the non-banking financial institution. Here you will see that the recently there was the lot of uh, risky loan that was provided and given by these uh, this non-banking and NBFCs. Due to this, the Indian, uh, the RBI, Reserve Bank of India put some of the restrictions, restrictions such as that 
these companies if they are getting the collateral for the loan for example if i am going to take the loan i have to give some as the collateral if i am giving the gold if the gold value is 1000 rupees the loan should be 750 rupees because whenever the, in the case of the i am not able to pay the installment for the loan that i have taken they can sell uh, they can sell that gold and they can they can manage the money they have given as the lended uh, as the loan so here you will see that the recently the rbi have put the restriction of the 75 percent of the gold value that is on the collateral however we have seen that the, this and uh, this non-banking financial company they were giving the much more than the 75 percent many a times 100 percent generally into the 19 percent and that's why there is the risk of the default in the case of the default they will not able to get the the acquired money that the needed money to pay back to the the other investor who had invested in these and uh, uh, non-banking financial companies okay besides that you should also know that the uh, the cash restriction it is the as per the rbi rule only 20000 of the rupees should be given into the cash and the rest of the amount should be given into the bank account however these these and uh, non-banking financial company they talk about that the uh, mostly those who come to us to, they are the non-banking uh, personality or individual or the those entities and here to make the process quick and smooth we need to give into the more into the cash however the rbi is of the view that if you will give more and more into the cash there is the chances again for the economic instability so we will not go for the all this thing despite there is the profit there is the more economic activity for the longer term this is not sustainable and there is the risk of the uh, risk of the dis uh, instability into the economy this is all about from that recently we have seen that the in the context of the pandemic the loan that was proportion was increased to the 90 percent but later it was decreased again to the 75 percent however these uh, non-banking financial companies they are not uh, uh, they are not following the rule and that's why the rbi has come with the restriction and penal, penal provision on the many of the uh, non-banking financial companies okay so this is all about from the this news article particularly you should know about the basics about the non-banking financial companies they are the type of the banking system that are are limited in its function for example into the normal bank you go you deposit you take the uh, you make the draft all this thing that is not provided to the these and uh, these non-banking financial companies and if they continuously they are working into the this area and if they later follow the sum of the criteria eligibility criteria by the RBI they are converted into the normal banking system as well Next important news, Chabahar, India's gateways to the central area already we have covered into the previous news. So we will not go into the detail, just you should know that the this Chabahar port initiative all started into the 1993 by the visit of the our uh, then Prime Minister P.V. Singha Rao. And uh, later it was torn into the agreement for the project was agreed by India into the 2003 when the Prime Minister Tal Vyadi Vajpayee was visiting the uh, uh, Tehran and uh, yes when the President of the Iran he came into the 2003 we finalized this Chabahar deal however due to the US sanction and US foreign, foreign policy our implementation of this port infrastructure construction all has been disrupted into the whenever there has been the disruption into the relationship between the Iran and the US UN frequently sanction the uh, sanction the project on the Iran and that's why India have to get back the name of this Chabahar port is the Sahid Behesti terminal okay so Sahid Behesti already we uh, we saw that he is the one of the founding member and his contribution into the uh, constitution of the Iran is eminent and uh, very dominant recently we saw that the India is committed for the 10 years deal under that one 20 million dollars we are going to invest and also we are offering in addition to this 120 billion a million dollar 250 million dollar as the credit line credit line means we will we will deposit this money and whenever there will be the need by the this project implementation we will further withdraw the money and use this 
Next important news is with respect to the human papilloma virus vaccine and its impact. We have seen that the, there has been the this human papilloma virus. This is mainly region for the cervical cancer that is found in the women. And we have seen that the, this is the most fertile case of the cancer, the leading cause of the death into the second leading cause of the death into the women. We have seen that the, due to this vaccination process, we have reduced nearly 90% of the precancerous and the condition. Okay, so here 90 to 95% and the most effectiveness of this virus is for the age between 20 and the 13 years. So this is all about from the, this news. You should know this virus and its impact for the prelims. Cervical cancer, whenever it comes, you should remember the HPV. In India, we have not brought it into the universal immunization program, but yes, it is about to be uh, very soon, it will be included into the, our universal immunization program. So please remember all these things. The next thing is that women with the no sexual autonomy twice likely to get the STIs. What is this STIs? This is the Sexually transmitted infection or the disease, here you will see that the, those women who do not have the autonomy with respect to the sexual decision. What could be the sexual decision? Means so with respect to the decision, whenever it comes to the intimate partner and whenever the such type of the things come such as the, that the husband coming and uh, he is uh, have the uh, sex with the other women or the he has to if the women have to ask husband to use the condom or the he has a sexually transmitted disease and in that case he can ask that uh, not go for the intimate thing okay so here you will see that the such refusal if accepted by the husband then it is it, it is considered under the sexual autonomy of the women means if the women is asking that yes she doesn't have the desire and women uh, comply with that so it is known as the sexual autonomy for the women and here you will find that the, those women who have such sexual autonomy they have the less chances to be infected by the this sexual transmitted infection or the disease so you can use all this in, into the your society portion you will find that the 70s uh, 3% of the women has such they have claim for the sexual autonomy and uh, yes 46% of women they have said that the face control behavior like the yes such as the husband shows the jealousy many a time husband accuse the women for the infidelity and also the husband can restrict the contact with the other and uh, control the finance of the women so all these things you will see that the, how the social behavior impact the physical well-being of the women as well you can add up as a further point whenever you are going to write your answer Next news that we are going to take is that the how the eye perceive the color. So here you will see that the, it is the retina. This is the portion where the whenever light goes, it comes here. And here there is the, here you will see that the photoreceptor of the eye that is known as the rod and the cones. So here this is the rod and the cones. Here there will be the, the light that will fall. And you will see that the wavelength of the light that will decide the red, green and the blue color. And after that, from the, this corona, core and the rod, there will be the signal that will be generated due to the chemical reaction. And this electrical signal, they will reach to the brain by the optic nerve. And by that, there is the different type of the creation of the colored light. And that's why the, this stimulate the perceived different color. For example, there could be the perception of the yellow color into the, if the red and green comes sim, uh, sim, stimulated equally. So here, this is the, all this thing by that, the, the different color of the eye, uh, the way we perceive the uh, color of the lights is due to the, all this functioning. Recently, we have seen that the mainly there is the specific net uh, network of the neurons that play vital role in all this mechanism. So this is all about from the two days news that we have covered. Uh, most of the relevant news from the two days analysis and uh, we have given one of the main questions. Please try to write the answer for that and we will discuss all these questions, uh, the main practice question as well as the five furious questions. Five a furious five question for the tomorrow's session so thank you for joining the session all the best jai hind